Hey, what's going on? Hey, Moshi, I think many people remember you from before when we did a video about you. Really? Who remembers me from that time? Okay, so that's Moshi. If you remember, I did a video about this when it first came out. It's certainly an interesting thing of where they integrated both the ASR function of the voice going into the large language model and then coming out, going through a TTS, coming back. The thing that we found when we played with this in the original video, I thought was very funny, was that the model is just dumb, right? When you ask it things. And really the thing that we were interested with at the time was this ability to have low latency going into the model and then coming back out of the model. So jump forward a few months and Qtai has now released their projects for the text-to-speech and the speech-to-text. Now they'd certainly alluded to this in some of the other releases that they had done along the way, but now we've actually got them. So the first one is the speech-to-text. I won't go too much into that here, except that you can see that this is really just for English and French at the moment. Hi there, how are you doing tonight? And we can see that, okay, it's transcribing what I'm saying. It's very quick. It's doing quite a good job at this. And you can see that they've got some info in there about how they've put this together and about how it's a low latency model, etc. This is definitely interesting if you've got some decent hardware to actually run this. Now, the other thing that they released, which is really interesting, is this QTI TTS. So speech to text being the ASR or the input area. This one is the output area. Again, we've only got English and French by the looks of it for languages, but we've got a bunch of different voices that we can try out and get it to generate TTS quite quickly because it is just a 1.6B model. Take a deep breath and allow your body to settle into a comfortable position. Okay, so you can hear that this is actually pretty good. Now they compare to Chatterbox, which we've looked at, to Dio, which we've looked at, and they compare to Eleven Labs. And you've got to think that this model is clearly up there. And they even have a really nice example of actually doing voice cloning with this. So let's look at that. So the text-to-speech is conditioned on a 10-second voice sample, and it's really good at reproducing the intonation and the voice that you use, even if they're kind of weird. So in this example, I talk like this to make the voice that um, you are about to hear. Whatever, like, yeah, it's pretty good. I guess you want me to say some stuff. So you can, you can hear there that it's actually doing very good at being able to do voice cloning on the fly very quickly here. This is where we come to the frustrating bit with this, is that while they've made these models for the speech to text and the text to speech, and for basically generating the embeddings for the voices here, unfortunately, it looks like they're not going to release that. You can see here, they mentioned that to ensure people's voices are only cloned consensually, we do not release the voice embedding model directly. Instead, we provide a repository of voices based on samples from data sets such as Expresso and VCTK. Now, I certainly find that very frustrating. It seems like this would have been almost the sort of go-to TTS system if it allowed you to clone the voices for this. Currently, it looks like they haven't released anything for you to be able to fine tune this for other languages. It's only supporting English and French, but they do mention that they're exploring ideas of how to do this. Okay, so if we want to get started, let's jump into the code. But just before that, we can come and look at the QTA on Hugging Face. And we can see that both these models are up here. We've got the text-to-speech models. We've got the speech-to-text here. You can see the speech-to-text actually already looks like there is an MLX version. So I'll certainly start playing around with that this weekend and see what we can do there. But for the TTS, we can see that we've got the model card in here. Very interesting to see the actual data that they use to train this, that they've used two and a half million hours of data. I think that's quite a lot more than some of the other TTS systems that we've looked at recently. And it's interesting to see that they basically labeled that data with the Whisper Medium model going through this. Now, at the same time, like I mentioned, they don't release the cloning voice, although I'm going to look at how we could play around with some of these voices in here. They do release this library of voices. So if you come in here, you can basically just pick out the different voices that you want to hear. And you'll see that they've got both a WAV version 
And then they've got the safe tenses version. So the safe tenses version is basically the embedding for the voice. And the WAV version is just the audio so that you can listen to it if you want to do that. All right, let's jump into the code and have a play with it and see how the voices sound and perhaps how you could make some voices yourself. All right, so I've taken the code example from their example in their GitHub repo and run through it. I've just changed it a little bit so we can see what were the actual voices so we can listen to those. And so this is the first one that they've actually got in here. Like I mentioned before, they're not giving us the actual voice cloning ability of the model. They're just giving us the pre-made voice embeddings. So what they're showing is that, for example, this voice. Basically, yes. You know, I'm, I mean, I've always been a bit of a playboy, but I'm, I'm going to settle down. Uh, I'm going to have three kids. That's my plan. Three kids. Okay. So that voice has a safe tensor embedding that you can load in. And so we pass that in and you'll see that it, later on that gets converted. So they've actually got a whole thing for converting where it is. And the voice path you can see is this Espresso. It will download it to your local machine. And it's basically just a safe tensor in there. All right. Once we've chosen the voice, we can just put in the text here. So I've changed their text and basically put, how are you? I'm a voice from Qtai. We can then just go through, load the model. Pre-process the text is what's going in there, load up the voice embedding, and then configure the model to actually condition on that voice embedding. And then you'll see that if we just generate some audio out, we get something like this. Hey there, how are you? I am a voice from Qtai. Okay, so you can see that it came out pretty good there. And now if we just want to make another recording in here, you can see I've basically made one here. Because I've configured the voice embedding already, I don't need to set up that part, but I do need to just pre-process the text, etc., in there. So you see, I get something like this out. Um, as you can see, I am quick to render and high. Okay, so now if we want to actually go and look at the voice embeddings, I've just put a little function in here for loading up these safe tensors and being able to look at them in PyTorch. So you can see that we can load something up. We can then look at it quite easily. We can see that the size is 1, 512, 125. We've also got a function in there for saving them. And now if we want to blend the voices, we can take that original voice that we had, load that up, but we can also take a different voice. So let's listen to the different voice. If the red of a second bow falls upon the green of the first, the result is to give a bow with an abnormally wide yellow band. Okay, so you can hear that's very different from the one that we had before. So now if we load up all our voices and we take these two voices and basically average them out, what we can do is we can come in here, we can save that as a new file that's blended tensors, and then come in here and load up the voice path being the blended tensors in here. And then we should be able to just generate audio and let's listen to it as you can see i am quick to render and high quality so you can hear this time that we've got something that's between the two voices it's not like the first voice it's not like the second we're somewhere in that latent space between the two voices there so you could actually train up a model to basically go from the voice to the embedding the only challenge there is we need a lot of examples i'm not sure that we have enough examples from what they've given us, really, they should just release the voice cloning actual model. And then we'd be able to use that quite easily. So perhaps if people put enough pressure on them, maybe they will release the model. Let's see. But anyway, if you want to play around and make some of your own voices, this is one of the ways that you can do it. So overall, a very nice release from Qtai. We've got something now that's a pretty small model that works very well for the TTS part and something that's working well for the ASR part as well. They could go on to put a language model, etc., in the middle and use this as a local chat system, etc. Now, I think this will be really interesting when it gets converted to MLX. And I think I will certainly come back and play with it once there is an MLX version that I can run locally on my Mac laptop here. Anyway, as always, questions or anything like that, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Certainly the Qtai team has come a bit of a way since we first played with Moshi, etc. And as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.